So I was in a live stream the other day working through some upcoming projects and a viewer asked me if it was possible to recreate Dr. Disrespect's YouTube end screen inside DaVinci Resolve. So I pulled up a recent video from Doc, checked out his end screen and something like this Dr. Disrespect thing that's just like this fire. I can do something like that. I can do something like that. Yeah, it is. So let's do it. Here's Doc's end screen, and what we are going to be recreating today is the fire effect on the rectangle around the suggested video and the circle around his icon here. Here is Doc's video, and here is what we're going to be creating today. And as always, we're going to start here in DaVinci Resolve on the edit page. And we're going to make sure our effects library is open, go to effects fusion composition, and drag that right onto our timeline. Then with our playhead over that, we're going to click this button to open the fusion page. Now this effect is really exciting because we are pretty much going to do one small effect, one small batch of nodes and then we're going to duplicate that and change up certain settings each time so we get a really dynamic and much larger effect. So we're going to start by creating a new background node. We'll go ahead and make that white. We are going to add a plain rectangle mask. We can pull that up in our viewer and we have this plain white rectangle but we're going to open that mask and uncheck this solid box here and then just begin to pull up this border width. And it might be hard to see why we have this overlay but if we click onto this different node you'll see that now this background layer is only this white outline. But coming out of this background, we are going to create a displace node. By default, nothing will change. And that's because we are going to click this button to create a fast noise node. And we'll switch this around so we are displaying our fast noise on window one and our displace on window two. And we're gonna pipe the out of that fast noise into the displace. And then you'll see that starts to affect this rectangle a little bit. If I go to this fast noise, pull up the detail, pull up the scale, and then the contrast a little bit. Now you'll really see on this rectangle what this displace node is doing. It's taking this map, this fast noise, and based on the brightness of the image, it is displacing or warping this rectangle. So next in our fast noise, I'm gonna pull up this seed rate just a little bit so that if we scrub this timeline, you'll see what this effect is kind of doing here. Right now, it doesn't look like much, but this is the one effect that we will expand and compound on to get this really cool fire texture. And the reason this works is because this fast noise is based on fractals, it's based on math, and it naturally looks pretty organic. If we check out the preview for this fast noise, as we scrub, we see this looks organic. It looks looks like it's moving in natural, ordinary ways. So it doesn't necessarily feel alive, but it feels like something we're used to seeing. But this first layer, we wanna keep pretty restrained. So I'm actually gonna go back into that fast noise, pull down contrast a bit, and even go back into that mask and make the mask a little bit smaller. So it's just this really thin line. And that'll just warp around a little bit. It's still a little extreme, so I'll maybe even pull brightness down a little bit. Yeah, so it's just a, a little bit of motion. And then what I'm gonna do is select all of these nodes click Control c to copy and click away and go to Control shift v and that will paste an instance of all of these nodes instances are really cool and really powerful if i change any of the settings on any one of these nodes it will change those same settings on the instance node that it is connected to for instance if i pull one up in one viewer one up in the other and i go to this rectangle and increase the border width you'll see that it is affecting the border width for both of these different instances but if i pull that border width back down to something normal and i go into the instance node and right click on border width and go to D instance then I can go to that copy and scale up the border width and it'll only affect that version while all the other settings will still be tied to the first node so I did go back into this first fast noise and I pulled up the scale to give our first outline a little more texture but you'll see that because our second outline is blurred you don't see that texture it just looks like a blurry rectangle so we're gonna come into the second instance of fast noise and D instance detail and contrast. Then if we pull up this contrast, you'll see that we start to get a lot more detail in those edges and it expands those edges in a really great way. And if we create a merge node and pull our first displace and merge that with our second and preview that, you'll see that we have that main core now, but we also have this hazy edge along the outside. But because it's pulling from the same fast noise, where the inner core bulges out a little bit, you'll see that bulge out even more on our blurry outside edge. And this is the first moment you can really see where we're going. These already pair really nicely together. They share a lot of elements and the same fast noise motion is affecting both of them. So it looks really natural. So this looks just like one element with this really interesting glow on it. But before we add more layers on top of this, there's one other animation we're gonna add to really sell this effect. And that is to go into our fast noise node, right click on center, and go to modify with XY path. 
that will enable this modifiers window up here. We can click that and then on Y, we can right click and go to expression. And then instead of this 0.5, we are going to write time divided by 500 and click enter. Let me explain what we're doing. This is modifying the X coordinate on center for the fractal noise. And the expression we typed in is telling it, okay, take the value of time as you move forward in time, use that number to drive the Y position. So as your timeline moves forward, it'll naturally increase the Y but that is way too fast for the kind of motion we want. So we have to take that value of time, that natural movement, and we are dividing that by 500 to get a time that will work. So if we preview this merge, and if we scale forward in our timeline, you'll see that we have that motion of the fast noise, but you'll also notice that it looks like all of these patterns and all of this noise is steadily moving up. It's wiggling back and forth, but the entire effect is rising upward like smoke and firewood. You'll also notice that we've kept this color as white, but now we can colorize that and start to build our effect a little. So I'm just going to this background node. I'm gonna select this color and select a nice vibrant reddish orange. This doesn't look great now, but we are going to keep adding layers and we're also going to bring back some other color options later that are really exciting so stick around but from here you have a lot of creative freedom you can select this entire first batch of nodes paste another instant set of those and i'm going to go ahead and create a new merge by connecting that to the output of the old merge but i'll just preview this first instance but remember because we grabbed those original nodes and created a new instance any setting we want to change and be unique to this will have to be de-instanced and we're just going to play around with some of these settings so i'm going to go back into this mask D instance, border width and soft edge, and in our fast node, D instance, detail and contrast as well. And brightness, why not? Then we can just change those settings a little bit to get a new shape to layer on top of this. I'm pulling up soft edge to make this a little wispier. I'm actually gonna really crank up this contrast and go in and pull up the border, but really pull up this soft edge as well. So by default, this is almost see-through. It's really subtle. But when we preview the merge with all of them layered on top of each other, you'll see that we're starting to get a little more variety and we can just keep on adding these layers. And now I even decided that I want the natural seed rate of this fast noise to be a little quicker. But because all of these fast noise are still instanced, if I go into one, pull up the seed rate a little bit, it will affect all of those past ones as well. They'll have that same value. So now as we play forward, it'll have a little more back and forth motion as the entire thing slides up. And we can even connect that merge to our media out and then jump back to the edit page to preview that in full time. And just these three nodes are working together pretty well. So next, to add a bit of flair, I'm gonna copy these nodes again, paste an instance, connect that to the merge, and I'll preview that. But remember, right now this one is pulling from our original copy. So I'm gonna go into there, the instance, the usual settings, border width, soft edge, and on the fast noise, detail, contrast, and brightness. And I'm going to pull down the border width just a hair, that's pretty small. But then I'm also gonna go into this background node, and de-instance the color. And you can't right click on this color, but if you right click on red, we can go to de-instance color group. And that will serve on all of these colors so that then we can go to this color. Now I'm gonna click something a little brighter, something a little more yellow, and that looks great. And you'll see, so now we have a little bit of a brighter core to this effect. And this one I wanna be a little more unstable. So I'm gonna pull up this contrast so it's sort of dancing around this other edge. And I'm gonna add a lot of detail so that seems pretty fine. That might be a little extreme for what I'm going for if I really want this to be the brighter core. So I'm gonna pull back that contrast a little bit so it has a little bit of that image. But then what I'm gonna do is select this newest group and create an instance of that. So that now we're just working with this new color and this one, I will de-instance the usual settings, pull up a fair bit and make, add this a little bit of a soft layer as well. And this one will really crank up that contrast. And I have a little too much of a soft edge, so you can't really see it, that's fine. Yeah, but something just thereabouts. So now we have a few of these colors mixing. Some areas are brighter, some areas are darker. And that seems pretty good. And so the last thing we're gonna do here is select this instance, that's the copy of our new color, paste that, connect it to our merge, and this will sort of be that, that roaming outlier. So I'll de-instance border width and contrast, 
for now. If I really pull this down in size, but really pull up the contrast, you'll see that we have a really sort of snaky, almost like coronal space star thing going on. That looks pretty cool, and I like that a lot. I was gonna do another layer sort of thing on top of that, but I think this looks cool. And we can preview this on the edit page. And this looks pretty cool. This is a little more energy driven, energetic than my first fire example, but that really just demonstrates the scope of this effect. Using these techniques, it's all a matter of playing with the settings to achieve wildly different looks. As long as you keep primarily the fast noise instance together, so that's always working off the same algorithm, it'll tie together and whatever you do, it'll look great. You can also change up the colors to have plasma or some other type of energy effect. And we chose a rectangle mask, so that's what it shows. But if you choose a circle or even the outline of a text, this effect will apply perfectly to it. So I absolutely encourage you to experiment here. Try new colors, animate your fast noise in new and exciting ways, and there's no telling what you could come up with. And if you do experiment and come up with something you like, I would love to see it. Leave a comment down below or find me on Twitter. And as always, I hope this video was useful to you. We did originally intend this effect to serve as a YouTube end screen, and I think it works great there, but there are any number of different ways you could utilize this effect. I know I definitely want to experiment with this a lot more. I think there are some really cool ways that I could bundle this up into a pretty interesting preset. So keep an eye out for that, and if you want to make sure you don't miss any upcoming news, consider subscribing. Thanks, I'll see you next time.